Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be using the DJI Mavic 3 drone and we're gonna be checking out the major firmware update that just came out for this drone. I have so much footage for you all to look at today. And since I've never featured the Mavic 3 on my channel before, this video is also going to be a just a general review of the Mavic 3 as well. So let's start flying it. It's a beautiful autumn day today, so I'm really hoping we find some nice colors and things to film. The Mavic 3 has two separate cameras. The first is a Hasselblad camera with a four thirds CMOS sensor capable of 20 megapixel photos and up to 5.1K video. It uses the full frame equivalent focal length of 24 millimeters with a variable aperture of f2.8 to f11. The second camera of the Mavic 3 where we are seeing some major updates to today is a telephoto lens with the full frame equivalent of 162 millimeters and a fixed aperture of f4.4. The telephoto camera uses a 12 megapixel half inch CMOS sensor. But first, let's take a look at the standard camera footage. I filmed in various locations and lighting situations so we can see what the Mavic 3 is capable of. I think the footage is so stunning. All this footage, regardless of how bright or dark it was, is very sharp and you can see lots of detail. There is a really nice amount of dynamic range, which makes it so easy to film in high contrast situations. In the forest shots, you can see the darkest parts of the forest are nicely exposed while still retaining the majority of details in the highlights. And all these examples you're currently watching are in standard picture profile. We have super vibrant and realistic colors coming from the straight out of the camera footage as well. The Mavic 3 makes use of what DJI have called Hasselblad Natural Color Solution, and I think the color science looks really great. Something I really enjoyed while testing out the Mavic 3 is the max flight time of 46 minutes. I never felt rushed to get my footage, and I could also usually get both photo and video shots out of one battery. So I want to compare the Mavic 3 to the a7 IV with both photo and video. So I've set up the a7 IV on a tripod here and I'm going to fly the Mavic 3 as close to being on top of the camera as possible so we can get the same side by side shot. Looking at these video files side by side, it's actually crazy how similar they look other than depth of field due to sensor size. Next, they are both in standard picture profile and the a7 IV is set to an aperture of f4. Let me know what you think in the comments and we'll take a look at the photo comparisons when we get into Lightroom a bit later on. So I have the drone up in the air right now because the next thing I wanna take a look at is a new feature we have with the firmware update. So in addition to having explore mode, we now have full control over the telephoto lens in the drone. So this is the normal camera and now we can press on seven which activates the telephoto camera and we have full manual controls over this as well. So I'm going to bump up the ISO because it's a little bit dark. We have an aperture of f4.4 with the telephoto lens and look how clear it is. <laughs> in video, the tele camera now supports filming in both 1080p and 4K at 25, 30 and 50 fps. I would say the quality of the tele lens is pretty good. It's not as crisp as the standard lens, but it is an improvement from explore mode quality that we had before, since we now have full manual control over this lens. You still can't use D-Log or HLG when shooting with the tele camera. You can only shoot in standard picture profile. The tele lens looks especially good in brighter daylight, like the beach shots that I captured here. You can see lots of details in these shots and the colors overall look great straight out of the camera. This is going to be such a great asset to film subjects like wildlife. I was on the lookout for some sharks at this beach, but unfortunately I didn't get lucky enough to find one. Here is an extended shot where I kept the drone still in slightly windy conditions so you can see how the gimbal keeps the tele lens stable. It moves around a little bit, but overall I think it looks smooth for such a long focal length. We also have digital zoom on the standard lens, which includes two times and three times zoom. And you can also still use digital zoom up to 28 times with the tele camera. So all the footage that you've been watching so far, I've been filming with an ND filter. The Mavic 3 does come with a set of ND filters in this cute little case. We have an ND4, 8, 16, and 32. We also have a clear filter as well, which I've just put back on the drone because we're gonna take some telephoto photos. With the firmware update, the telecamera photo mode now supports single shooting, 
auto exposure bracketing, burst shooting, time shot, pro adjustments, and raw photos. So let's jump into Lightroom. First up, I have an underexposed shot from the standard camera, and I just want to bring up the shadows to see how much is recoverable from this image. Again, I think the standard camera from the Mavic 3 is absolutely stunning for both photo and video. I love all the details that you can see in the photo, and you can see we've been able to recover the shadows really nicely and still retain a lot of detail. I took a shot with the standard camera on the left and the telephoto camera on the right from the exact same spot and it's really cool to see the telephoto camera is this little section here with the standard camera. So they look really good at a glance looking at the images like this, the colors are really nice from both cameras. When you zoom in to 100%, I do feel like the telephoto lens could benefit from some sharpening just to be able to see all those extra details and to make it match in quality a bit more with the standard camera. I have another comparison photo with both cameras taken from the same spot. This is with the standard camera and I've brought up the shadows to recover the tones in the photo as much as possible to make it look more balanced out. And as you can see, again, we can recover a fair amount in the shadows. And this is the telephoto camera photo taken from the exact same spot. As you can see, as we're pulling up the shadows, we don't have as much dynamic range in the telephoto camera as the standard camera, but I do think if you expose your image correctly, it is enough dynamic range to be able to work with. And if we zoom in, I'll show you a before and after. Again, I've added some sharpening just to make it match in quality. And here I have my Sony a7 IV versus Mavic 3 comparison. So let's just zoom right into 100%. I'm going to bring these trees close together. Again, just like video, it's super crazy to see how similar they look in photo as well. The sharpness of the trees is really nice here. I did notice that the a7 IV does hold the highlights together a little bit better than the Mavic 3. You kind of see some blurring here on the edges. But yeah, overall, that's really impressive to see how similar these files look. And I did also take a photo comparison with the telephoto lens. So this is the a7 IV file with my 2 to 600. So let's zoom in to 100% on that. And this is the telephoto camera on the Mavic 3. So with the telephoto camera, I feel like it does a better job at taking photos of further away subjects. It does struggle a little bit with focusing uh, on closer subjects like these bicycles, but Overall, I don't really think it looks that bad. I think it needs a little bit of increased exposure. Again, that sharpening that we were talking about before. And I think in this photo in particular, because it is ISO 800, since we have an f4.4 aperture, I will be using a little bit of noise reduction as well, just to clean that up. And with those little edits, I do think we have a usable telephoto image. Okay, I'm so excited for this next bit. We've come to this really cool fire trail where Dan is going to ride his mountain bike and we're going to test out active track and obstacle avoidance. The new firmware update will bring a fierce bypass option for obstacle avoidance. It's not available just yet, so I didn't have the chance to try it, but with my obstacle avoidance set to standard bypass, I did manage to bump the drone into some trees a couple of times. First up, I was making the drone fly directly into the tree trunks and it did a great job at avoiding hitting into anything all on its own. Next, I want to share some active track examples, which is where I did hit into obstacles. The Mavic 3 has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. You can still only use active track and intelligent features with the standard camera. It would be great to see this available with the telecamera eventually as well, as it is a lot harder to track a subject manually at such a long focal length. Overall, the Mavic 3 does a great job at tracking a fast moving subject. I found that with larger and thicker obstacles, it had no problem sensing them and bypassing while continuing to capture a cinematic shot. I also like the automatic placement of the subject it's tracking in the bottom lower thirds of the frame. It would be cool to get an option where you can choose where in the frame you want the subject to be placed. And I also found that it did a good job at keeping track of Dan, even when he was hidden behind a bush for a second, it knew where to find him once he was visible again. A couple of times when the active track didn't work perfectly is when we had a lot of obstacles. I was tracking Dan's front in this shot, but when he put his head down, the Mavic 3 wanted to find where his face went. It ended up in the bushes, which caused this cool shot here, but because there were a lot of obstacles, the propellers did hit into some leaves. 
It also had a harder time with these very thin tree branches at the forest, which I think is understandable. And it also lost the tracking of the car when we were doing a 15 point turn to try and not get stuck in some mud that was coming up ahead. However, when I did hit the Mavic 3 into a few leaves and branches while testing it out, the most damage it caused was scratching the propellers a little bit. Nothing actually broke, which is very cool to see. I think the active track is great. I have a lot of confidence using it and just letting it do its thing. For this review, I wanted to test it out in trickier situations with the dead pine trees and in dense forests. And even then I got so many usable shots. I have read some reviews saying the Mavic 3 active track can be erratic, but I experienced the opposite where I would select to track from the side, but it warns me that the location is too busy. So it tracks from a similar angle instead and very slowly makes its way to the side when it can. I'm also excited the Mavic 3 will be compatible with the new controller released with the Mini 3 Pro. It would have been nice if it was available with this firmware, but according to DJI, this will be coming in another future update. With the firmware update, we have HLG as an added picture profile and we can also fly up to 200 FPS at 1080p only, but let's try it out. In these comparisons, I've interpreted HLG back into Rec. 709 so we can see it against standard and D-Log. While this will be handy for advanced users, this is also a great alternative to D-Log for standard users. Even though D-Log files have the most dynamic range, you do need more post-processing time and knowledge to get the most out of those files. Personally, I find the Mavic 3 HLG files require less work in post compared to D-Log while still delivering very similar results. The firmware update also allows you to use D-Log and HLG for quick shots and master shots, and we also have better D-Log color assist while filming. Here's a quick shot of 200 FPS in HD in a 4K timeline. In case you're watching on mobile, here is that footage filling the 4K frame. Personally, I think this footage is a bit lackluster due to the quite substantial crop of the sensor that we're seeing in this 200 FPS shot. So that is all I have for today's video on the Mavic 3, my review of the Mavic 3, and checking out all the new features with the firmware update. Let me know what you think of this video down in the comments below. Do you want to see more drone videos from me? I had a lot of fun filming this today, and I think it was cool getting to show you guys a little bit more of what Australia and New South Wales looks like. But as always, I make new videos every single week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>